the 15th of August. On this day we celebrate the Domitian, or the translation to heaven of our all-glorious Sovereign Lady, the Mother of God and ever-Virgin Mary. When it pleased Christ our God to call his mother to him, he sent an angel three days beforehand to give her this news. Coming to her, the angel said to her, who is full of grace, This is what your son says. The time has come to call my mother to me. Do not be afraid at this news, but rather rejoice, for you are going to eternal life. Welcoming this message with great joy, the mother of God, filled with an ardent desire to rise up to her son, went to the Mount of Olives to pray there in tranquility, as she often did. An amazing miracle was then wrought. At the moment when the old holy reached the top of the hill, the trees planted there bent their branches, bowing down and glorifying the queen of the world like reason-endowed servants. After having prayed, the old holy returned, returned home to Mount Zion. When she went into the house, it suddenly began to shake. Giving thanks to God, she heard the house lamps lit and called together her kinsfolk and her friends. She herself set everything in order. She prepared her deathbed and gave orders that all be made ready for her funeral. To the women who came at her summons, she revealed the news of her departure to heaven and as proof gave them the palm branch, the symbol of victory and incorruptibility that the angel had given her. Still held by the bones of the world, her companions heard this news with copious tears and groans, begging the Mother of God not to leave them orphaned. She reassured them, saying that she was indeed going to heaven, but would nevertheless continue to protect both them and the whole world by her prayers. At these words, the women stopped their weeping and hastened to make the preparations. The All Holy also told them to give the only two robes that she possessed to two poor widows who were her constant companions and friends. She had scarcely spoken these words when the house was shaken once again by a noise like thunder and it was filled with clouds bearing the apostles assembled from the furthest parts of the world. It was thus that the whole church in their persons was mystically present to celebrate the funeral of its sovereign lady. To the choir of the apostles was joined that of the hierarchs such as St. Hierotheos, St. Dionysius the Areopagite and St. Timothy. Their eyes full of tears, they said to the Mother of God, If you were to stay in the world and live among us, we would of course have great consolation, O Lady as it would be as though we saw your Son and our Master in you. But as it is now according to his will that you are taken to heaven, we are weeping and lamenting as you see, but we rejoice at all that has been arranged for you. To which the Theotokos replied, You disciples and friends of my Son and my God, do not turn my joy to sorrow, but bury my body and keep it in the position that I shall take on my deathbed. At these words, St. Paul, the chosen vessel, arrived in his turn. He threw himself at the feet of the All Holy to venerate her and addressed this praise to her. Rejoice, O Mother of Life, and object of my preaching, for although I never saw Christ in the flesh, it is Him in seeing you that I believe I behold. After having made her last farewells to all those present, the All Immaculate laid herself down on her deathbed, settling her body as she wished it, and offered ardent prayer to her Son for the preservation of peace in the whole world. Then, having given her blessing to the apostles and the hierarchs, she, with a smile, peacefully gave her soul, white and more resplendent than any light, into the hands of her Son and her God, who had appeared together with the archangel Michael and a host of angels. Her death came about with no suffering or anguish, as her childbearing had been without pain. Peter, the leader of the apostles, then intoned the funeral hymn, and his companions took up the bier, preceded by others present who carried torches and accompanied the cortege with their chanting. 
Saint John the theologian was at their head, holding the palm of Victor in his hand and followed in silence by the crowd of disciples. Angels could also be heard, joining their voices to those of men so that heaven and earth were entirely filled with this singing in honour of the Sovereign Lady of the world. The air was purified by the ascending of her soul, the earth was sanctified by the burial of her body, and many of the sick recovered their health. Not being able to bear this sight, the leaders of the Jews aroused the people and sent them to overturn the bier bearing the life-giving body. But divine justice forestalled their dark design, and they were all struck with blindness. One of them, the priest Jephoniah, who with greater daring had succeeded in laying hands on the holy bier, also had his hands cut off at the elbow by the sword of divine wrath, and his severed arms hang on the bier, presenting a pitiable sight. Brought to repentance by the punishment, he wholeheartedly embraced the faith, and at a word from Peter he was healed and became for his companions an instrument of salvation and healing. When he was given a branch of the mother of God's palm, he laid it on the eyes of his companion and healed at one and the same time their physical and their spiritual blindness. Arriving in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Apostles buried the Most Holy Body of the Mother of God and remained there for three days, their prayers unceasingly being accompanied by angelic hymns. In conformity with the disposition of Divine Providence, one of the Apostles, St. Thomas, was not at the funeral. He only reached Gethsemane on the third day and was unconsolable at not having a last sight of the deified body of the whole holy. The apostles, therefore, with one accord, decided to open the tomb in order to let him venerate the holy body. When they raised the stone that closed the entrance, they were all filled with amazement on finding that the body had disappeared and that only the shroud remained empty and keeping the shape of the body. It was an irrefutable proof of the translation to heaven of the Mother of God. Her resurrection and the ascension of her body united again with her soul above the skies in the close company of her Son to be our representative and our advocate before God. Mary, the daughter of Adam, but having become truly the mother of God and mother of life, in giving birth to him who is the fullness of life, thus passed through death. But her death was no dishonor, for overcome by Christ, who submitted to it by his own will for our salvation, the condemnation of Adam became a life-giving death and the principle of a new existence. And the tomb of Gethsemane, as well as the Holy Sepulchre, appeared as a nuptial chamber where the wedding feast of incorruptibility is solemnized. It was fitting, indeed, that conforming in all things to Christ our Saviour, the Most Holy Virgin, should follow all the paths trodden by Christ to spread sanctification throughout our nature. After having followed him in his passion and having seen his resurrection, she now had the experience of death. As soon as she was parted from the body, her most pure soul found itself united with divine light, and her body, having lain a short time in the earth, was soon raised by the grace of the risen Christ. This spiritual body was received into heaven as the tabernacle of God became man, as the throne of God. It is the most significant part of the body of Christ and had often been likened by the Holy Fathers as the Church itself, the dwelling place of God among men, the first fruits of our future state and the source of our divinization. Through the womb of Mary most chaste, the Mother of God, the Kingdom of Heaven has been opened to us, and this is why her translation to Heaven is a cause of joy for all believers, having thus acquired a guarantee that in her person it is the whole of human nature, having become a Christ-bearer that is called to abide in Christ our God.
Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities to thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the glory, the Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, the ages of ages. Ah. Forsake the world, O Theotokos. Thou hast translated unto life, since thou art the mother of life, and by thine intercessions dost thou redeem our souls from death. I shall open my mouth to chant, and with the Spirit shall I be filled. And word shall I now put forth unto the Mother and Queen. And I shall be seen in joyous jubilation, acclaiming her falling asleep with exultant hymns. Most Holy Mother of God, save us. O you young virgins, with Mariam the prophetess, now cry in jubilation the song of departure. For the Virgin and only Theotokos is conveyed unto a heavenly inheritance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The divine heavenly tabernacles befittingly received thee as a living heaven, O all pure Lady, and thou stands radiantly adorned as an altogether blameless bride before thy King and God. Make steadfast, O holy Theotokos, thou living and never failing spring. All them that form a company and gather for to praise thy name, and on thy godly memory deem them all worthy of glory's crowns. Most holy Mother of God, save us. Since thou hast brought forth of mortal loins, O pure one, thou didst accomplish the departure consonant with thy nature, but since thou hast given birth to very life, unto the divine and an hypostatic life was thou translated. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The company of theologians from the ends of the earth and the multitude of the angels from on high hasten to Zion, at an almighty behest, O Lady, to minister unto thy burial as was meet and due. All we the generations call thee blessed, O Virgin Theotokos, for in thee he the uncontainable one christ our god was pleased to be contained blessed are we also who have thee as protection for a day and night dost thou intercede for us and the scepters of the kingdom are strengthened by thine entreaties Wherefore with hymns we cry to thee, Rejoice of all of grace, the Lord is with thee.
When the prophet Abacom, O thou most high, learnt of the divine and untraceable counsel of thy pure incarnation from the womb of the blessed virgin, he cried out, Glory to thy power, O Lord my God. Most holy Mother of God, save us. It was amazing to see the living heaven of the King of all descending into the hollows of the earth. How wondrous are thy works. Glory to thy power, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. At thy translation, O Mother of God, the armies of the angels in fear and joy covered thy most spacious and God-containing body with their sacred wings. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. If her incomprehensible fruit, by reason of whom she became a heaven, willingly underwent and burial as a mortal, how shall she who virginally conceived him refuse burial? Our creatures were so amazed at thy divine and great glory made, O pure virgin who hast not known wedlock, for thou wast translated from earth to the eternal abodes, and to a life that never ends, and doth grant salvation unto all them that acclaim thy name. Most Holy Mother of God, save us. Let the trumpets of the theologians ring today, and let the many-voiced tongue of men now cry praises. Let the air resound, shining with infinite light. Let the angels hymn the Domitian of the Virgin. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The vessel of election distinguished himself in hymns to thee, O Virgin, and all him, Theotokos, holy in ecstasy beside himself, holy consecrated to God. And he both verily was, and was shown unto all to be inspired of God. On this divine and most honoured feast of God's our Holy Mother, let all of God in their mind now celebrate. Come, let us faithful now clap our hands and send up glory unto the God whom she has borne. Most Holy Mother of God, save us. From thee did life spring forth without breaking the bars of virginity. How then did thine immaculate and life-originating tabernacle have experience of death? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Since thou became the temple of life, thou hast attained unto eternal life. Thou who gave birth unto the anipostatic life, are passed through death unto life. The grave and death could not hold the Theotokos, who is unsleeping in her intercessions, and an unfailing hope in her mediations. For as the mother of life, she was translated to life by him who dwelt in her ever-virgin womb. Set a rampart about my mind, O Saviour, for I undertake to praise the rampart of the world, even thine immaculate mother. Make me strong in a tower of words, and fortify me in the strongholds of my thoughts. For thou dost cry out that thou wilt fulfill the askings of them that ask in faith. Do thou then give me a serviceable tongue, and a mind not to be put to shame. For every gift of illumination is sent down from thee, O Enlightener, who dweltest in her ever-virgin womb. Who dweltest in her ever-virgin womb. No created thing but only the Creator with a godly minded youth adore and worship as God. But manfully trampling down threats of fire, they cried out, O supremely praised and all acclaimed one, blessed art thou, thou Lord God of our fathers. Most holy Mother of God, save us. You young men and virgins, you elders and princes, you kings and judges, while reverencing the memory of the Virgin and Mother of God, sing you, O Lord and God of our fathers, blessed are thou. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let the mountains of heaven resound with the trumpet of the Spirit. Let the hills now be exceedingly glad, and let the divine apostles leap for joy. 
the queen is translated unto her son to rule with him forever. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The all-sacred translation of thy divine and undefiled mother has mastered the supernal ranks of the powers on high, that they might rejoice with those of earth who sing to thee, O God, blessed art thou. Three guiltless youths cast in the furnace were saved by the offspring which the Theotokos bear. Then in figure and in type, now in very truth indeed, and he has gathered all the world which cries out in chant. Ye works of his, O sing the Lord's praises, and exalt him greatly for ages and all ages. Most Holy Mother of God, save us. Principalities and authorities, powers, angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, the cherubim and the dread seraphim, glorify thy memory, O Immaculate Virgin, and we, the race of man, praise and supremely exalt it unto all the ages. Be blessed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. He that strangely dwelt in thine immaculate womb when he became incarnate, the same received thine all sacred spirit and gave it rest in himself as a son beholden to his mother. Wherefore we praise thee, the Virgin, and supremely exalt thee unto all the ages. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O oh, the wonders of the ever virgin and mother of God, which pass all understanding. For when she abode in the grave, she showed it to be a paradise before which we now stand today, rejoicing and chanting. Praise the Lord, you works of his, and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. Beholding the dimension of the virgin, the angel's house were struck with awe. How the virgin went forth from the earth unto the heavens. Let every earthborn man upleap in the spirit and now hold his torch on high. Let all the bodiless noetic hosts now celebrate joyously the Theotokos, his sublime and sacred falling asleep. As they cry out, Rejoice, O thou all-blessed one, ever virgin and pure mother of our God. Beholding the dormition of the virgin, the angel's host were struck with awe. How the virgin went forth from the earth unto the heavens. Come and upon Zion, let us rejoice in the divine and bottom mountain of the living God as we look upon the Theotokos, for Christ does translate her as his mother into the Holy of Holies, to a tabernacle that is incomparably better and more divine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Beholding the dormition of the Virgin, the angel's host were struck with awe, how the Virgin went forth from the earth unto the heavens. Come, you faithful, let us draw nigh unto the tomb of the Mother of God, let us embrace it, touching it sincerely with the lips and eyes and forehead of the heart. And let us rub bounteous gifts of healing that stream from the ever-flowing fountain. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Beholding the dormition of the virgin, the angel's host was struck with awe. How the virgin went forth from the earth unto the heavens. Graciously receive from us his funeral hymn, O Mother of the Living God, and overshadow us with thy divine and light-bringing grace. Grant victory to our hierarchs, grant peace to the people that loves Christ, and forgiveness unto us that sing, and the salvation of our souls. O ye apostles, from afar, being now gathered together, here in the vale of Gethsemane, give back See.
Supremely glorious Lady, the Theotokos and Ever Virgin Mary, whose venerable Domitian and translation we celebrate this day. At the prayers of St. John the Baptist of the Holy and All Praised Apostles, with the power and under the protection of the Holy Life Giving Cross and all the Holy Bodiless Powers of Heaven. At the prayers of our fathers among the saints Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Cisoes the Great of Egypt, Brandon the Navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, our protectors and our benefactors. With the prayers of the holy martyr Tarsisius, the youth of Rome, with the prayers of the holy new horror martyr Christos of Ioannina, the priest monk, with the prayers of the holy new horror martyrs Alexis Stavrovsky, the archpriest of Petrograd, who was slain by the atheist in 1918, and Andrew, the priest of Bolshe Kasulskaya, who was slain in the year 1919. With the prayers of St. MacArthur and those with them whose memory we also keep this day. With the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Dana, and of all the saints. Have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. With the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.